Yeah, well, I got nine o'clock. Oh, okay. uh, being the current chair, <laughs> soon to be passed, uh, I've called the meeting to order. If you can stand up, say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. On our agenda review. Mr. Chair, there are no changes to the agenda today. I move the agenda. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, the first thing is to appoint a new chair and vice chair. Um, what are the wishes of the board? So I'll make a motion to appoint Kip Brunder as our new chair for 2016. <clears throat> I will second that. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Against? We don't do this every time, so it's a, it seems a little odd. <laughs> Just kind of once a year. Yeah, we go through a rotation. Rotation. So we rotate rotation. Uh, chairs every year. So, uh, Chair, it's, you, you have the chair. Thank you very much, Vance. Uh, thank you for your leadership and work last year as the chair. And now I would look for a nomination for the vice chair. Nominate Mark People. Second. Do I have a second? Any other discussion, questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Congratulations, Mark. <laughs> it's going to congratulate you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to the 2016 board meeting uh, calendar. Should be one in our packet. <clears throat> We've discussed it several times at work sessions and whatnot. <clears throat> I'd move approval over the calendar. Do I have a second? Second. Any other discussion? Um, there's a one part, the uh, Envision 2020 uh, Rail Group. I, I believe that I, I got information from Drew that says they're, they're, it is not no more. They don't have a rail group for Envision 2020. Oh, you know, as far as the committee assignments? Yeah, yeah we were yeah, on the said, calendar. Said, right. We're working on it again to yeah. convene in the future. They might yeah. call it again, but they said it's, it's one of those, you know, a whole bunch of them went away actually yeah. about right. four of those Envision 2020 um, committees just disappeared completely. For now. Okay, well, we'll deal with that yeah. later. We're on the yeah. calendar I mean, right now. We're on the calendar. This, yeah. this is just the calendar. Yeah. Yep. So, anybody have any, no. No. any for, for conflicts? All of right now, we're on the calendar. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you jumped <clears throat> to the calendar instead of assignments. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right, Vance. Yeah, I did. Yes, you're right. Yeah. No, I, we're, we're on the board. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah, we're on. What are we on? The calendar. The assignments, yeah. We're still talking about the calendar, right? Yep. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. <laughs> I, I didn't look at it. Either. Board committee assignments. <laughs> Here, I have to listen better, and you, you yeah. know. <laughs> I'm having trouble with mine. The wisdom of being a chair. Yeah. yeah. We had the discussion about the Envision 2020. Mm-hmm. Any, uh, I, don't, I don't see anything else. I think they're all set. Here. I will I will move the I, uh, assignments uh, with the... Uh, the Envision 2020 <clears throat> rail group taken out, Jesse. We'll second it. <clears throat> Discussion. Yep. Just have a couple items. You can take another one off of mine on there that's on the on mm -hmm. the list we have in our packet. Um, <clears throat> I was removed from the uh, MINRA, you know, the Minnesota River Area Agency on Aging, uh, about four months ago by Region 9, and so I'm no longer serving on that. Uh, MINRA group. They've separated from Region 9 and they're a standalone committee now or, or group, I guess, 501c3 and have moved into the old union building down on uh, Broad Street. Mm -hmm. So they're sort of reorganizing. And then um, just for like language purposes, on the um, I, I belong to two different towards zero deaths groups. One of them, what, the, what they're trying to do, the state is trying to have each county somehow have their own what they call safe roads committee. So it's it's in a sense it's somewhat separate, but it's still attached to the our South Central region. But each county, a lot of them now have their own what they call safe roads. So it would be Blue Earth County Safe Roads Committee, and then behind that we could put TZD. So it'd be 
um, Blue Earth County Safe Roads Committee. And then behind it, you can put D, the TZD just to kind of clarify what right. it's attached to. <coughs> and then the other one is is just the South, is a MnDOT, that's MnDOT's South Central Towards Zero Death um, Steering Committee. And so that's, and that could be TZD Steering Committee if you want, but. <coughs> and that one is different than the yes. South Central Towards Zero Death Committee? No, uh, okay, there's one. That's that's our own Blue Earth County right. Safe Roads. Correct. And that could just be Blue Earth County Safe Roads. Correct. With the TZD. Got that. The other one is MnDOT uh, towards Z uh, South Central. And SC. that's on the list. Yeah. Yeah. So you're okay. Those with are that. two separate ones. Okay. So yeah. I'll add the Blue Earth County one, but okay. the other one can remain as is. Yeah, that's okay. fine. That's fine. Thanks. And then one other request I'd like to ask, since I'll be on it for the next 18 months. The acronym is CCATF, <laughs> and it's a Region 9 Clim Climate Change Adaptation Task Force. So it's Region 9, just R R9, Climate Change Adaptation Task Force. And that's, that's a grant that we've been given with federal and state dollars for the next 18 months just to study, not to mitigate, but to look at ways of, of how we can adapt to regardless of which way that weather goes. If it's changing or not, what would what's the impact? What would that do? And so it's kind of, they're doing this all over the country right now. It's part of our, actually I think it came out of the Homeland Security, a lot of these funds, because it does impact our health. And then of course uh, we know uh, Commissioner Sturmberg has been very active with NACO recently more and, and uh, is on our Rural Action Caucus, so um, he should be, our I think, our primary involved with that, but I'd like to be listed as secondary on there. I don't know how you want to do that, board, but an alternate? Alternate yeah. or secondary, yeah. whatever. Alternate. Okay, because I mean, I'm, I'm on the board, I mean, they listed me on there. Well, you're on you're on the Rural Action Caucus. Yeah. You you know you're listed on through NACO on right. the Rural Action, so that would only make sense. But you, I think you're our primary on that one, though, Vance. So, but I'll I'll try to go to as much of it as I can. I just don't know if I can do as much travel, maybe. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Anything just, else? I think that's. MRB is gone finally. We just finished up all that business. <laughs> Okay. So we can make a friendly amendment to the yes. changes. Okay. Yep. Is that all okay. right? Did you accept the friendly amendment? Accept it. Those? Do you have okay. all that, Jesse? I've got it. Okay. Right. Any other Thank discussion? You. Anybody else have anything else to <coughs> add or remove? Okay. All in favor of the board committee assignments, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay. Commissioner's committee reports. Drew, why don't you start? Okay. It'll be shorter because we had the holidays, you know. I know, <laughs> but we were busy with holiday stuff. Yeah. Well, our last board meeting was uh, December 15th. And of course that afternoon, uh, we had our annual uh, board, sort of a holiday event where we, we uh, open up the doors here and have a little reception for all the employees of our county. And um, that was nice to see some of the new, new employees and some of the ones that have been here for many years come and just have a nice holiday greeting. We were all there, all the board and a lot of our staff. Thursday, 17th, um, I met with our VALIC rep, Greg Burkhart. Um, and it, some of it was personal, but some of it was also just trying to find out what kind of things they offer. He's, he actually is more of a financial planner than some people are. So you can ask him a lot of questions related to financial planning if the, if the employees want to. And uh, and then I, uh, on that same day, quite a few of us attended the Public Works Farewell for Dean Ehlers, mm -hmm. remember? And Dean has been with us, well in the Parks Department, I know it's like, I think it's close to 30, maybe 27 or 28 years in the Parks Department. And then he had about eight or nine years or more just in the county. So uh, a lot of years with the county. And then after that, we had a uh, farewell event for upstairs for Patty O'Connor. Uh, She's led our taxpayer services for many years, and and um, was it 38 years, Bob? Do you remember? 37. 37 years. 
and most of us were all there. And then Friday the 18th, I did go to my Region 9 Climate Change Task Force. Uh, we had it at the Profinium Place Bank. Uh, I can't think of the gentleman's name that works at the bank there. They have a community room, and he's very curious about these things too. And so we, uh, we met there and we talked about the future uh, sort of timelines that we have for getting this all completed within the next 18 months. Uh, we are looking at health assessments and how, when climate changes, how it impacts the community health in our region. And so we set up a work plan for that. That same day, um, I uh, was Santa's helper at Luther Memorial Home, <laughs> like I am every year, and, and uh, it was fun with the, all the folks that live there and their families. That's over in Medelia. Um, let's see. I don't know about you guys, but I was unlucky enough to pick up that sinus lung infection thing over the holidays, and it lasted about a full week, and it was not fun. But So that was kind of part of my Christmas. But we flew out to Los Angeles for a wedding, and my nephew works for the city of Los Angeles. He uh, is working for Joe Buscano. Uh, there's 15 councilmen on there, city council there, mm -hmm. and each one represents about 200,000 people. Wow. So it's pretty... <laughs> <laughs> Pretty interesting. He's the deputy legislative uh, representative there. And uh, let's see here. Volunteered at Holy Grounds over the holidays a couple of times and uh, met with Bob Meyer yesterday afternoon, our administrator, just to go over a lot of our packet items and then think about the new year and staff changes and things that have occurred and that are happening this year. <coughs> and then last night, I, we're trying to reinvigorate a club called the Optimist Club. And anybody's welcome to join that club. It's just starting up again. And so we had about a two hour meeting last, or hour and a half meeting, I'd say, last night. And that's where we do activities and fundraising and things to help support area youth programs. Our next fundraiser will be a bullathon. And a lot of the proceeds are going towards the REACH, which is through LSS, you know, for at risk youth in our area and homeless kids that are just flopping around the community. So, and I believe that, that ends mine, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Drew. Thank you. Well, no. Okay. Of course, uh, Drew mentioned um, employee reception and Dean and Patty's uh, retirement on the 18th. I uh, uh, went to uh, St. Paul, attended a residential PACE uh, discussion group up there as part of the Rural Minnesota Energy Board. Uh, we have the the PACE program now, where we uh, uh, make low interest loans that are paid back on property taxes to businesses that want to update <coughs> to energy efficiency and they were now talking about uh, doing it for residences so that was a, a good discussion uh, then on the 28th they met with a landowner at Garden City who had a um, uh, severe uh, ravine erosion uh, thing going on from County Ditch 17 so we Craig and I met with him to talk about options to uh, get that fixed and that brings us up to today for me okay thank you Will Mark Oh my goodness, I guess. Um, <laughs> Got you off that one. Eight case going cookies. Going. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah as, presents. we didn't, as everybody, uh, we had, of course, our board meeting and then uh, and the holiday party. And the next morning, uh, along with Kip, we uh, we were Santa's helpers in getting the share tree gifts from Madison East over to the uh, community <coughs> service armory the new armory that we've been doing and it's like the uh, thanks for that 30 that yeah I think it's 30 years plus now that uh, we've been doing that actually our, um, our company's been doing the actual the, the, being their sleigh I guess but Kip's and Kim's been involved for quite some time and uh, that's that's a real worthwhile yeah, effort and appreciate everybody that's helped with that in terms of gifts for the mm -hmm. share tree yeah um, December 17th, we, I had a Partners for Affordable Housing meeting and close out the year. And of course, we're gearing up for Pedal Pass Poverty fundraiser on February 27th, the Saturday. So, so when you want to give the money, make sure you yes. give it to me instead of Mark. <laughs> Why did he lose it last time? No. <laughs> no. I I'm was on just, his team. I, he's already taken, the, oh. yeah, all my, uh, yeah. But I'm glad to have again. <coughs> Uh, Commissioner Vance on my team. So. so if I joined your team, we'd have to post every event. 
No, because you're there at different times. No, you, uh, no, you'd, you'd be there at yeah, different, times. different times. So, oh, so we and it'd only be the one event. So. Oh, okay, okay. So I just want to make sure we're, we're following up with you. Yeah, we could, you could. Yeah. But you'd have to try to get money from the same people they try to get money yeah. from, too. <laughs> so. um, then, uh, let's see. Yeah, then I guess, yeah, that pretty much concludes uh, my report. Uh, yes, family activities. My son's up, was up from Georgia with his spouse and grandson. Yes, as the county attorney said, the little grandson stole the, sto stole the show. So That's right. Your yeah. ranger or something? Huh? Yeah, yes. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Vance? <clears throat> All right. Well, we already talked about the uh, employee holiday party. That was uh, a good time. Uh, on the 16th, I had a call in to NACO. Um, and then on the 17th, um, we had, uh, let's see, well, we had a holiday party at uh, the Department of Public Safety in Mankato that I uh, was invited to come to at noon. And then, of course, Dean's and Patty's retirement and that evening I went to a uh, went to the Blue Earth County Historical Society for John Cross who talked about his new book and had a book signing there uh, that was that was good on the 18th I had uh, all seasons arena meeting um, on the 22nd I had an airport commission and um, you know I think that was about it Okay. You know, Christmas and New Year's are kind of a lot of your meetings get canceled for December. So. Yep. All right. Thank you, Vance. We're coming up on 9:15, but I really only have a couple of things to add since everyone else has kind of hit all the events we had with the retirements and the Christmas events. Uh, but I did have a board of adjustments Christmas supper. And we had actually everybody there but one person from the Planning and Zoning and the Board of Adjustments. So it was a nice turnout. We had a nice visit. I, I thank them on behalf of the board for all their hard work and their service and their and that committee assignment for us. I think they appreciated that. Then I had MVAC. We had a training on uh, some uh, kind of the legalities of a board and what your responsibilities are. It's a training we have to do every, they're starting to do every year for these nonprofits. Uh, it was very informative, it was about 90 minutes. And then the next day after that, I had a South Central Workforce and we just did some finalized, uh, some got some questions finalized by MVAC for doing the At Youth Employment Program this year. So looks like everything's moving forward with that. And then uh, Commissioner Strunberg and myself had the holiday lunch with the staff uh, to show our appreciation for all their hard work and all their efforts throughout the year and trying to keep us in line That's and right. straight and I didn't organized. put that down, I did didn't I? put that down, so I will mention <laughs> that. So. <laughs> but we do appreciate the, the <clears throat> staff we have at the admin level and-, and uh, That was a lot of fun too. It was. And, and then I met with Bob yesterday to visit a little bit about the agenda and what we had coming up today. So that brings me up to the end of my report and we will hear from the county attorney, Pat McDermott. Pat. Chair, Commissioners, thank you. Uh, I did provide some uh, updated through the year-end information. As you know, the information is posted online Thursday before the uh, this board meeting. So this is information through year-end. Uh, so give you a better idea of, of the caseload numbers and I will be breaking out uh, some additional information in a year-end report that I hope to have finished sometime this month. But uh, just to give you an idea, uh, in pretty much every category we are up and so that is uh, a caseload increase not only for our office but for the Sheriff's Office and Human Services and corrections and everybody within the system. So if there's any specific questions that you have, I'd be more than happy to answer those questions, but I'll provide more detail in some of the, in a, in a year-end report. As you see, the controlled substance crimes continue. That's where the, the biggest increase has been in um, our filings this year. So, and as of uh, the first, the two former assistant city attorneys are now uh, Blue Earth County employees. We do have uh, the position posted for the third misdemeanor prosecutor and hope to have that person started in the relatively near future. So, sir. That's what I was going to ask you about is if 
Are some of these reflective of any of the recent changes that have occurred up in the office at no. all uh, with, the new, with the new misdemeanor? Nope, I will keep those numbers separately because uh, from a statutory requirement, it requires obviously board approval to enter into the prosecution agreement with the city. And I will keep those numbers separate to provide information not only to you, but to the main Cato City Council and city officials. Okay. And then so. you, did you state that, that, um, that the, the reason is mostly related to drug activity? That's been the largest uh, increase in our, in our felony caseload has yeah. been related to the, the drug crimes. As you'll see that, um, you know, last year we had 247, the year before 246, and this year we're up to uh, 311. So that's about a 20% a, a increase or 20, 25% increase um, in our caseload in that respect. And juveniles are up too quite a bit. Juveniles are up yes. quite a bit. Some of that information with respect to the juveniles, um, we, at the beginning of the year, and I'll, I'll cover this information more in detail in uh, the year end report, but we redid the juvenile diversion program and the process in which that uh, flows through our office and corrections. So there's gonna be a little bit of an increase in caseload number there because of how that change in process has occurred. Hmm. The data collection has changed or something? <clears throat> it's a, a shifting of, of resources. And there's more and more. It, it, it was truly a function that should have been coming out of the county attorney's office. And uh, that's the way that I set it up oh. for 2015. Oh, and that's the way that I wanted to do it because that's the way that statutorily it should have been done in the past. I was just curious especially on the juvenile side of it, does, do you know, does human services get these too at all or do they get sent to them or do they, you know, our, our human uh, services department so they can see these stats on the juvenile side or? or it, it, no, they're, I, I mean, they're, they're shared with the public just like yeah. uh, they're shared with you. Oh, okay. uh, it's the information that's online. <clears throat> and so, I mean, I'm I sure. can see where that could set up some programming for setting goals for reductions. <laughs> right. You know, I don't know. It's nice to see the stats, but what can we do about it? Well, uh, it, there's to... various things that, it, first of all, was, was uh, the change in procedures and processes in the juvenile diversion program. The secondly was the starting the truancy intervention program, and I'll oh. break those numbers out actually, uh, a little bit further in the year-end report. But uh, you'll see where it, it appears the truancies have gone up. Well, the actual truancy filings went down by two. Oh. Instead of, you know, so we're taking a more proactive role in uh, the county attorney's office and going out and, and to the schools and meeting with these people and meeting oh. with the parents and the kids and the truancy because truancy is, again, one of the leading indicators of future criminal behavior. So uh, there's been a, a increase in district enrollment uh, in the District 77, which is, is essentially from the school standpoint, our largest client. Yeah. So uh, we have been undertaking some of those. And another program that, uh, that we started was the prioritization of prosecution of anything that occurs on school property. And with the assistance of the courts, I did get the judges to agree and court administration to agree that once the case is, is first of all, it's treated priority with uh, law enforcement, then once it comes into our office, it's out the door within 36 hours. Oh. And the court sets the matter on for a hearing within the, the, the next available court date, which is at the most should be 10 days in most given situations. So we're dealing with, with those school issues and with the juvenile issues differently than we have in the past. And so we have been dealing with those issues differently to help uh, take care of some of these concerns because, again, that's the focus uh, of where part of my first year has been is in the juvenile area. And I would think that it's an indicator for if Human Services was to look at those numbers or any individual uh, that comes up on your radar, it could be an indicator. It's not necessarily true, but. Well, it, it, it can be an there's indicator. A family, there's right. a family issue that, that could be deeper. You know, Correct. That they're, they're not dealing with something's fall, falling apart in the family or there's some other issues that need to be. Right. And, and again, that's a, that's a resource issue uh, because from a true truancy progress, or a, truancy in, a, in its finest form and at the basic level is considered a child in need of protection or services. Oh, okay. And that's treated differently in the, in the juvenile justice system than any other juvenile filing. So, but again, that's a resource issue for human services uh, to be able to do those things, and to, and thus far they haven't been able to. They haven't. 
so the reason to get this through within the thirty six hours is that to make more of an impact with the juveniles yes it is i mean yeah and uh excuse me commissioner sternberg you you'll understand this as a as a prior uh community or liaison officer with the schools is is uh it's the immediacy of the consequences and to make sure that the kids understand that uh this is something that's taken seriously and deal with those issues sooner rather than later because if you know it's bad enough that we have to uh, wait uh, 10 days or longer but if we would wait uh, two three months you know bring the kids in it doesn't have the same impact so that was the the idea behind the program um, and again, even though the, the judicial system is backlogged in, in many respects, um, the courts did agree to put those and treat those cases with priority. And we've done that and we've had uh, very good feedback from all the schools in the county. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Pat. Yep. Any other questions for Pat? Thanks, Pat. Yep. Thanks, Pat. Thanks. All right, we'll move on to the regional Great uh, Railroad Authority meeting. I'll let Vance call that meeting to order. I'll call a meeting of the Regional Railroad Authority to Mr. order. Mr. Chair, we maybe should recess the regular board oh, meeting. Yeah, yeah. there should you have go. A motion to do yeah. that first. Uh, motion it's, to recess. It's the first the meeting of the year. Yeah. We're going to so moved. Second. Got a first and second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Now. Call the meeting of the Regional Railroad Board to order. I'd like to nominate uh, Kip Runder then as the. Or we can. Or do you want to look at the agenda? Um, Appointment we, officers is first. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We've already called to order. So called to order, and you nominated Kip. Oh, Kip as. Well, the, I as move all. Why don't you just move all? Just of move them all as a group. Yeah. We did okay. them separately last year. Did we do them separate? Did we have we, them we separate? did. We we did motions on each position, oh. but voted just once. So oh. you know, if you'd okay. like to do it that way, that okay. would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is a group that meets. So really we're doing a, a point of order here. So we want to have a yeah. Kip Brunder, uh, all nominated as chairman. Good. I'll second. And uh, keep discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Now you get to go. All right. I take a nomination for vice chair. Nominate Mark People. Do I have a second? second? Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. I take a nomination for secretary. Nominate Drew Campbell. I'll second. Thank you very much. I'll accept yeah. the uh, nomination. I'll second it. <laughs> I, yeah. You just, I thought we were having one vote on all of them. So. I, I know. But <laughs> the chair is taking order here. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Yeah. Any, any other discussion on secretary? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Treasurer. I'll no. nominate Will Purvis. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Executive Director. Nominate Bob Meyer. Second. Uh, Any discussion? We want to do that? Okay. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Agenda review. Anything to add? Uh, Mr. Chair, there are no changes to the agenda. I've got one, just one request. Mm -hmm. That I could have 30 seconds or, or at the most a minute to say a few words. On behalf of the Railroad yeah. Authority? Okay, I guess I would grant that. Okay. We want to know what you're going to say about yeah. Well, let's, <laughs> let's approve the minutes and then we'll hear from Drew. Okay. We, I'll, might, I'll, we, I'll, might, we, might, we might have minutes that last I more would, than a minute. I would move yeah. the minutes. I'll second. Any discussion on the minutes? No. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. <clears throat> Drew. I'd just like to say that. Um, and I think Vance would be in concurrence with this. You know, even though the the, the Vision 2020 doesn't really have a, an active committee right now about rail, uh, what do they call it? Um, when you're moving the bodies all over the place, you know, we don't we don't really transit have transit. We don't have much in this area in, uh, in southern Minnesota. We don't have any, and um, so I, I would like to just say that I think you're going to see in the next year or two some more discussions about that. That we're going to see planning possibly for looking seriously at what the costs are going to be for adding a rural railroad transit for people and it could be just from the centers like Rochester Mankato and some of the bigger towns I don't know but I just think it's something that's needed it came up at our discussion meeting with Vance was at uh, when the Commissioner of Transportation Zelly was down here for meeting with Mankato representatives and um, and I think it's it's almost shameful 
that we don't have more serious planning for some sort of rail transit in southern Minnesota. Okay. So. Thank you, Drew. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion items for the railroad authority at this <clears> point? <throat> Hearing none, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved. Second. Got a first and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. <clears throat> motion carries. Now, back to Vance. So we go down to the <clears throat> Economic Development Authority annual meeting. And the first thing is the election officers. Uh, I need a motion for uh, chairperson. <coughs> Nominate Kip Runder. Second. Got a nom nomination and a second for Kip Runder as chair of the uh, EDA. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Keep your comments to yourself, vice chair. Well, I had to, <laughs> I had to go through something properly the whole way through here, so. Uh, I am looking for nominations. Thank you, Vance. I'm looking for nominations for vice chair. I nominate Mark People for our vice chair. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Nominations for secretary? Nominate Drew Campbell. Second. Thank you very much. I'll accept. <laughs> Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same <laughs> sign. Motion carries. Uh, treasurer? Nominate Will Purvis. Second. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Executive um, Director. My, Robert Meyer is our uh, Executive Director. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Agenda review. Mr. Chair, there are no changes to the agenda. Okay. We'll look for a motion to approve the minutes from October 6, 2015. So moved. Second. Any other discussion, question, comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We will make a motion to adjourn if there's another business for the EDA. So moved. Second. Got a first and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Now we reconvene the regular <coughs> board meeting. Okay. And I think we are at about 9.30. The polls. Yeah. Oh, right yeah mm -hmm. So I think we'll just bring Al up at this point, but uh, before... While I was coming up, I would just like to acknowledge Mr. Prince in the audience who is coming to visit with us or hear what we have going on at the county. So welcome, Mr. Prince. Thanks. That's uh, very interesting. <laughs> That's a okay. good word for it. <laughs> That's why there's so many people. Alan Ryan, come on up. <laughs> and uh, yeah, come on up, Ryan. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. morning, Al. Good morning, Ryan. Beautiful winter day yes, out there. Yes, another sunny day. We can get some roads melted off today, maybe. Huh? Yes, yes. As some of you know, I had uh, my 68th birthday a couple of days ago. And a close well, happy friend. Birthday. Happy birthday. I didn't know the happy number, birthday. though. I didn't know the oh. number. <laughs> a close friend of mine who was a high school classmate, and we went to college to get a second birthday card, of course. And I thought you might get a kick out of this. <laughs> <laughs> who is that guy? Yeah, I know. Did he um, have hair? <clears throat> yes, somewhat. <laughs> Some of us are losing ours. But. I, I can relate to that, yes. Uh, 50 years have gone by very quickly. Well, there. Yeah. several items of business here. Uh, consider final approval and payment of $5,446 to Icon Constructors for Cost Out 14 Bridge Project. Do I have a motion to approve? To approve? I got a Second. Second. Any discussion, questions, comments? How did Hearing that go? Uh, yeah, was it pretty good? Well, it, you know, it was a uh, interesting project and there were delays in getting the beams. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to resolve that. We had a claim that we resolved. So we got a good bridge out there, a good settle, good fair settlement. I would recommend we go ahead with it. Okay, okay any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay, Consider. and then the uh, agenda here has an error in it. The, we've got the right amount and the right contractor, but rather than the Lime Township Bridge, it's the Casa 26 Madison Lake Main uh, Street project. Yeah. The only 26. All, all the paperwork is correct. It was just mislabeled on the agenda. Which, which one? Oh, uh, number two on the agenda. Number two. Strike Lime Township. Oh, okay. And add... Uh, Casa 26 Madison Lake. Okay. 
Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any other discussion? That's the final payment for the uh, for the front, the main street there. Then yes. Oh, that's that's a wonderful. We've all been out there to it look is, at it. It's it a wonderful project. I know Ryan worked on that too quite a bit, didn't you? You met with those folks out there. And I was visiting with some other people the other day. They're still commenting how much they enjoy it and like it. So yeah. that's a good thing. Wonderful. It's really nice. I, I like the way they got the the trees and they got the nice old-fashioned lights that are downtown and. Um, I just see nothing but uh, a positive future for that downtown because of the project, actually. So those are major challenges working on the main street and the business street for a small community. And we've done so in Lake Crystal and Madison Lake and Mapleton. Uh, there are a number of other projects that need work really in Good Thunder and Vernon Center, Pemberton. So. And it's really important that we <coughs> do spread out throughout the whole county and you know, there's there's some comments from the rural areas that everything is done right here in Mankato, um, which is where most of our mm -hmm. population is. But we we need to make sure that we do um, do a fair amount of spreading throughout Blue Earth County, and and something like that is just so important. Yeah, I, I think our sales tax program too had a, a good balance of projects between the city areas and the rural areas and pavement preservation and bridges and the transit component. Yeah. So I think uh, we have worked hard at having a balanced program over the years. On that project too, I've heard that some, some people pushing for removing county roads going down the main street of a city or something like that, you know, to have it kind of skirt the town or whatever. But in cases like this, didn't this help the city quite a bit with the expenses because it's a county road? So we actually picked up the bulk of the expense. Yes, we mm -hmm. paid 90% 90, 90 of the street curb and gutter, about half the storm sewer cost. city picked up the other 10%, and then uh, the city utilities, the water and the sewer mean. And then each one of the, well, is the city, when you say city, you mean the, the landowners that also paid them? Well, to, we you know, charge the, the city thing. their share, and then the city can choose how they collect it, through general taxes or through okay. assessments or some combination, yeah. typically, using their standard policy. I just know it was reasonable. Yes. I looked at some of the property tax uh, assessments that were on the properties there, and they were reasonable right. for as much construction that went on in that downtown right. area. You know, and at times uh, folks say, well, the county stated the highway too much is going to the counties, but it ignores that we do quite a bit of work. We have our system in the small towns and in the city of Mankato. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they are getting funds through our county state aid construction program. All right, I got a motion and a second on the $66,059.33 to Haltmeyer to take a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Consider cooperative agreement with City of Mankato. Yes, and this has been uh, in front of us at a previous board meeting, previous workshop. Uh, we've been working with the City of Mankato staff uh, and arrived at what I think is a good compromise. I did send out by email a sketch to help illustrate the agreement uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. And basically the concept is, here's Prairie Drive, here's Casa 12. City has already constructed Prairie Drive from Highway 22 over to the Prairie Drive roundabout, mm -hmm. and then heading south to the new high school, new junior high. So the road under consideration here is from Prairie Drive to Casa 12. And the question has been, can we construct this with the 12 project so that this link is made, it's more efficient, more cost effective, <coughs> will provide better access to the high school and encourage development in this area. And we worked out an agreement where this is not a county highway, but the county could construct it with 12 and then the city would reimburse us for a portion of the cost. The agreement basically has the construction, right away, and engineering costs prorated between the city and the county based on these distances. From Prairie Wind over to the east boundary of the Lang parcel, mm. divided by the total length of it. So that's roughly half the distance. Uh, and we don't have detailed engineering or a detailed engineering cost estimate for it, but our, our best estimate is that the construction of this whole piece is about 638,000, right away about 75,000, engineering about 64,000. 
So the total cost is about 777000 If you split that prorated based on these links, that's about 360000 for the city and 417000 for the county. Those numbers will be refined as we have actual engineering stations for these locations. And as we have a more detailed estimate, the city would provide us this cost when we award the contract. So that gets rid of the question about what interest rate should be paid and what, what should be the maximum time mm -hmm. before they pay us. They'll pay us that share up front. Actually, 90% of that share up front. And then when the contract is final out, they would pay us the remaining 10% and an adjustment for uh, the final cost. Makes sense. Okay. It's probably easier than charging the interest rates and all the stuff we were talking about before. Yeah. It simplifies <laughs> it immensely. Yeah. Well, why don't I get a motion on the floor and then we can discuss so it. So moved. Second. Got a first yeah. and a second. I, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate all the work you did. And I know myself and Kip uh, had intergovernmental meetings and with you involved yeah. in mm -hmm. talking about this. Uh, there was at one time a talk about leaving that small portion as a gravel road, yeah. which which really would be uh, uh, a, a shame, and which is really what uh, you know citizens look at us and say that's a, a waste of government money. You know, you do all that construction work and you put a road there, only to two or three years later tear it all back up again. And that's that's what that's when people really look at a waste of taxpayers' <clears throat> money. But uh, I think it, it, it shows our partnership with the city of Mankato, uh, the good work of yourself and the engineers in the city of Mankato to come up with a, a, a real good plan that's fair for everybody. And, and really for us, uh, Blue Earth County, you know, it helps all our citizens. I mean, uh, yeah. citizens of Mankato are citizens of Blue Earth County and we have to understand that and it's, it's going to help us that small portion there is going to really help people from Eagle Lake, right. uh, people from the the northeastern mm -hmm. edge of the you know coming coming down going to the new school. So I, you know, it's a plus plus, and it's it's a savings in the long run. It's a savings of taxpayers' money. It keeps your car cleaner too. Yeah, we I got, got, I got I, some some people are. In the I got a like Jeep. <laughs> Oh, I know. And sometimes the, de the devil's in the details, right? You know what I mean? We, yeah. we talked, Al sh tried to clarify some of it for me so I could understand the agreement because it seemed like it was quite a deviation from where we were, you know, before we were going towards. But uh, we're, we'll be responsible just like with, until, it's, until it goes back to the city or goes to the city, uh, annexed into the city. Uh, we'll pay for the lighting and that sort of thing too, then I'm assuming. And Yeah, the overhead lighting is included in the street construction costs. Just okay. the sanitary sewer and the water main isn't. Uh, the agreement has uh, the county getting permission from Mankato Township to do the actual construction want, on their road. I wanted to ask you that. Which, is there they, something will, which they will not object to. No, I know, but is there, anything, <laughs> is there anything that we need to do before that agreement can actually be processed uh, without the township's uh, sign-off on something? or? Well, I've discussed it with them, and they're very open to the county yeah, doing this work and then the city taking over that street. They, they want they're it. Very fine. I know. I just didn't know. You know just yeah, make sure you Procedurally, I just want to make sure we don't... Uh, so procedurally what would happen is the county would get written permission from the township. We had their oral permission to rebuild that piece of road. And then the agreement has a city taking the road over as a city street, taking jurisdiction of it when it gets annexed and developed. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. The agreement also says that once it's constructed, the city will do the maintenance on it. So they'll be doing, doing the snow plowing and taking care of the okay. street even before it's annexed and taken over. Well, that was my question, who's going to maintain it, or yeah. snowplow and stuff, so. Yep. All right, any other questions or comments on this issue? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay. Uh, Jeff Johnson, the city engineer, uh, has indicated that. All right, see ya, bye-bye. Has indicated that we'll be, it will go before the city council after January 11th meeting. Okay. So hopefully they will pass it also. All right. Well, thank you. Some information items. Uh, and I spoke with the chair yesterday about uh, the Garnsey Sand and Gravel and Sanger site. We've received inquiries about the status of it. There hasn't been anything discussed here for some time. The city has gone ahead and uh, 
as you know, they entered into an option payment of $10,000 with SMC to secure it as a possibility to buy it for the next year. The city uh, contracted with Braun for a bathymetric survey of the lakes to see how deep they are. And they're up to 20 feet deep in some places with some pretty clear water, basically reflecting the elevation of the Blue Earth River through the sand mm -hmm. uh, bank. city also completed a phase one environmental review, which is this big report, <laughs> well, where they basically reviewed records of public agencies and they did some on-site review. And they found uh, well, the old building, they found there's a well, there's a septic system, uh, and there, there was a permitted demolition landfill for a short period of time. So we'd be aware of those things. There may be other things there too, if we were to proceed with this. Uh, the other thing that's come up is that the uh, lock-on grants are available for purchasing park land now, which would be for up to $100,000, 50% of the land purchase costs up to 100,000. So the option price is 225,000. If we were to get that grant, uh, would be 125,000 to be split between the city and the county, according to past discussions, about 62,000 each, something like that. Uh, <coughs> but somebody has to apply for the grant. And, uh, Paul Vogel is making the argument since the city has done all of this work and they're looking at it as a, a partnership between the city and the county for acquiring the land, it would be reasonable for the county to apply for this grant. Uh, we wouldn't do it alone. We would work with the city, uh, the other information for it. So we can certainly do it within our parks budget. I just would like to see that there's a consensus that we go ahead and apply for that grant. Yeah. I. I don't want to be in partnership with the city of Mankato with this park. I've been very clear on that, I think. But if I'm not there, I just said it. Um, but I know the wishes of the board are to own it and operate it. So I, I don't have a problem with moving forward with the grant. But I just want to be clear that I'm, I don't want to be in partnership. I don't have a problem throwing some money at this or contributing some money to buy it and secure it. But I certainly don't want a partnership. So okay, uh, that's I, just my feelings. I would echo that myself. I would prefer that the city own it and operate Correct. it. And, and I'm not even excited about throwing any money towards it. Hmm. Well, I, I think it's a great piece of property and that it'd be a shame if it went somewhere else other than for public use. Um, I think it's a good spot for just some rustic, you know, it, the funny thing is, is that we own land on three, no, two sides of this property, maybe three sides actually, you know, if you really want to look at it. Uh, we ca count the landing down there on the Blue Earth River. Um, and then we own our uh, Red Jacket Bridge uh, Park right there. And then we also got a good <coughs> deal on some land across the river. We got a really good deal since, since mm -hmm. we all have been on the board, all the five of us voted to buy that land. That was, I don't remember, maybe $60,000. That's all of the land? Yeah. 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 So, like and so we spent, we spent about the same amount of money for a nice piece of land that was probably half this size or a third this size the river and um, that's rustic land and people can hike on it and do what they want to do it's all it's all self-contained in that right that region and so it makes sense to me that we would at least preserve it for public use mm -hmm. whether the city wants to get involved or if the county just wants to own it outright you know I'd, I'd be open to either one mm -hmm. so but I think it'd be nice to move forward and see if there's some way we can preserve this for public use because the access it has nice access for for people and I know brought up land we've got a lot of county land around throughout the county but a lot of it's inaccessible mm -hmm. so this one's at least accessible for people mm -hmm. off the river and off the road both so if it isn't too much of a burden um, I think it would be a, f a fair price no knowing that it's been appraised at three times what uh, mm -hmm. what they're willing to sell it to the city and county for so other commissioners I uh, yeah I I think most citizens uh, favor the idea of having it uh, having the park um, I, I don't really have a you know I don't have as big a problem with uh, sharing uh, I think that the city should take you know you know take the bigger uh, role I'll encourage that but I okay. think giving some money towards it was fine and, and uh, if we can work out some sharing thing I guess that, that see how that goes but yeah 
yeah, I think it should it would should it would work for everybody. It's a good piece of property to to have access for the yeah the citizens of the county and the city. Yeah, it really is. Bands. <laughs> it's down to me, isn't it? <laughs> What's the two to two right now? <laughs> well, I, he has support for the going for the grant. I, I'm saying, yeah, I'm, I, 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 I absolutely support you going for the grant. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my <laughs> my wishes on the park is, uh, you know, it's I I believe it's, there should be something there. I believe you know to retain that that property for uh, for people to be able to use it. I mean, people that want to go. Uh, hiking through the trails and stuff like that um i'm i'm kind of on the uh, fence as to whether uh blue earth county should be doing it or the city of mankato um should we go in as a partnership between the two of us well we do partnerships with the city of mankato all the time uh, we've had some that haven't worked out so well, <clears throat> but we in in 99% uh, of the time uh, we work partnerships uh, all the time with the city of Mankato, and and uh, I think with uh, decent uh, uh, heads up on top, we could we could figure out a good uh, way to to get this whole uh, thing working properly. Uh, so yeah, you I I think it'd be obviously a, a good idea to go for the grant yeah and i again i'd like to clarify i don't have a problem with the grant and applying for the funds i think i have a little different perspective of the grant i think if we get the grant that should count as our hundred thousand but that's just my opinion <laughs> 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 but i don't have a problem with the grant and yeah. and i and i really drew your comments about i think it should be public space but i just have a concern entering but, into a partnership with Two different boards having two different opinions, which should happen to that park. That's my only concern. I don't disagree that we should control it. Yeah. I disagree with how it should be managed. So we'll have that discussion later. So I yeah, think you the know, consensus the, to move forward with the, the, the grant. County, the county owns a lot of property that is not parks. And even owning the property doesn't mean that we have to turn it into a park. Right. Right. You know, um, the the problem with uh, some some folks feel that we have to uh, you know throw down a parking lot throw down uh, rest rest areas and that then you're talking hundreds of thousands if not a million dollars uh, to build a park area you know uh, but to uh, to have a, a very rustic area that that's uh, is just basically for trails and signs posted that there are no you know restrooms and stuff like that that might work all right i think my, you've got my your opinion business. is if we're going to apply for the grant grant we just well say we're going to buy it is that right <laughs> that's oh, yeah. I'll, stand, I'll stand with you <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know it is the, easier to manage without having to go into an agreement you know with somebody but i know the uh, feeling is unanimous and that's why i prefer proceeding so carefully with it <laughs> i think you've got consensus to yeah, buy the you have to, to for apply the, for the grant the grants, or at yes. least we some shall, direction but we shall <laughs> and consensus I, but not a vote yeah yeah <laughs> yes. okay very good hey, you know just uh over the weekend too i was with some friends in the cities over the holidays and one guy mentions that gee he'd been to mankato and ridden on some of the bicycle trails and had a great time stayed overnight and i didn't say a word <laughs> and then uh, a couple of days ago i was walking our dog on the uh, trail behind Indian Lake and I ran into an older fellow with a cane walking along <coughs> I stopped and talked to him for a bit after my dog stopped jumping on him <laughs> and he said uh, he really liked that somebody had plowed this road because it was easier for him to walk sure. on it he can get out here and enjoy it and nice. there again I didn't say anything I just kind of recorded that as the uh, the public does appreciate these things in many different ways mm -hmm. yep. they do yeah they do Okay, okay, we'll move on. Okay. Uh, Maple, for some months now, and uh, Mr. Maple has been the chair of the Maple Board. We've been working on the Mankato Area 2045 Transportation Plan. So rather than go through this page by page, why, <coughs> there have been a couple Didn't, didn't you read houses. it over the holiday <coughs> weekend? That's, oh, yes, uh, yes. Time, I... <laughs> it is complete. It's been accepted. Uh, it's quite a document. I think it's a very good document. Uh, so a lot of people took part in, and worked hard on this. We had a very good consultant working with us, and this is kind of our guide 
it doesn't determine what we do, that's still up to you folks, but it is a guide that will be assistance in getting funding for various projects. Just pass that around. It's also on the website, on the Maple website, which is currently under the City of Mankato uh, website. Okay, status on the uh, County 17 or Madison Avenue Hafner Drive intersection. We've asked uh, Brian Lechek, who was the uh, engineer who did the uh, traffic studies uh, a couple, three years ago, to update those studies. Now that the Highway 22 roundabouts are in place and traffic volumes have shifted somewhat, perhaps, we should have that study back in the end of January, and perhaps a workshop would be a good time to, to take a look at that and look at options for Hafner and 17. Oh, and just not a major item, but just uh, I guess as an indicator that with our maintenance crew as well as construction, we do look around for innovations and if something looks like it has good potential, <coughs> we'll try it out, demonstrate it. This was in your packet, I think, and the back of the motor grader and mounted to the rear with hydraulic uh, lifts to lift it when it's uh, traveling down the road is a rubber tire compactor. So here when they're blading a gravel road, they can smooth the road, which leaves loose gravel in place. Normally you allow the rain and traffic to compact that. Uh, here we're getting a better finish and hopefully holding the gravel in place and a better ride for people because it's being compacted right after the motor grader. So I would imagine that that compaction then would be a, a, a nice even flat compaction, whether Whereas if you're driving, if you use the traffic on the road, you're going to have the gouge and, and the stuff of the, the right. ruts. Yep. Right. So that sounds like a wonderful idea. Yeah, and it's, it, as an option, you could use a tractor and pull the rubber tire roller, but there you've got more equipment than another operator. So if it works out, we'll slowly adapt this for uh, additional motor graders around the county. And we have 320 miles of gravel road, so it's a major maintenance item for us. Okay, uh, a very nice uh, wider angle picture of the County Road 147 bridge under construction. Okay, see that again. I'll, I'll pass that around. Okay. They have been slowed <coughs> by the high water, mm -hmm. and it's very unusual to have this high water in the Blue Earth River this time of the year. Yeah. In fact, normally the generators are shut down <coughs> this time of the year. They've been able to run one or both really? generators from Is late summer unusual? through wow. now. But it is delaying this project. They're having to build steel uh, coffer dam around where the abutments will be. When those are in place, they have to make them watertight, pump the water out, pound in the piling, pour the concrete uh, footing, and then pour the concrete abutment. So in process of pounding in the sheet pile, they hit some boulders in several places, so they can't get them as deep as needed to keep the pile stable. So they're having to put <coughs> whalers and rod ties back into the earth. They may have to put steel rings around it. But these are things that bridge, <laughs> bridge constructors run into. They know how to do it. They've got the equipment, they've got the materials, they've got people that know what they're doing, but it has delayed things. Mm -hmm. They're still working out there. <coughs> okay, our, our planning and design projects as we keep our pipeline moving along. The County 1, Old 66 from Good Thunder to County 9, working on completing design acquiring right away. We prioritized some <coughs> parcels where trees will need to be cut down because they need to be cut by April 1st because of the long year bat. The uh, Good Thunder end of the project too, there has been a stormwater drainage problem. So we, we've been working with the city and state aid on resolving that stormwater drainage. Uh, County 12 from 17 to 83, we discussed that with the Hoffman and uh, the city agreement. The other agreement we need is on the south end with MnDOT. Uh, with the roundabout, MnDOT has required what's called a level one review of the design. So we've got received comments from the district here. We're working to resolve those comments. <coughs> the next step is to send it to the central office in St. Paul, resolve any comments they have in order to get MnDOT approval for the roundabout design and go from there to an agreement with MnDOT for them to pay a portion of the cost. Okay, cost out one from Trunk Highway 30 to Good Thunder. We finished the grading work. We're putting together the plan for recycle the pavement and the uh, new lift of pavement. County 8 and County 16, which is Stadium Road in Monks in Mankato, there will be a mill and overlay contract and selected curb and gutter replacement and ADA ramps, American Disability Act uh, ramp replacements at the sidewalks to comply with that law. 
Do we have that set? I mean, it, whenever we start doing stadium and stuff like that, we're sometimes we <coughs> run into the Vikings training camp, and do yeah. we have that timed properly? So. Uh, you know, issues like that because not only does it yeah. hinder the construction, but it hinders obviously the people going, coming and going from yes. the training camp. We we always consider that as best we can and try to avoid the Vikings training camp and MSU starting. And we know that MSU starts a week early to get the kids in <laughs> to the dorms. <coughs> uh, so that does complicate things. These two projects, the city of Mankato will be the lead, will be developing a uh, agreement, a cooperative agreement, where they take the lead in those two projects. Okay. So it will be on them. Yeah, so we can blame them. <laughs> they had a little of that this 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 year with uh, <coughs> monks. monks and yeah, yeah. The, it was delayed because of weather. Yeah, right. yeah. and you can't do anything about the weather. Yep. <laughs> Things like that happen. So, <coughs> and then. Uh, we're doing the mapping and, de and design work. We'll, beginning, we'll, be, 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 <laughs> we'll be beginning design work in County 14, from County 4 to Trunk Highway 30, the next project on our five-year plan. But two minutes maintenance overlays, developing plans for those. It'll be a larger program this year. And then bridges, the uh, state-issued local bridge bond fund is depleted. We're hoping the legislature authorizes additional bridge bonds this year. We have several projects ready to go. County 52 bridge, southeast corner of the county, the three bridge decks on County 5. And you know, we uh, advertised those but did not award because of the high cost uh, last year. Our plan there is coordinate with MnDOT. Since 169 will be closed, there'll be a lot more traffic on Highway 22. We don't want to have five closed at the same time. So we would advertise and award a contract in summer, late summer, for the contractor to start late fall after 169 is opened again. That actually has several benefits. Uh, they're bridge deck replacements uh, using existing abutments so they can form, insulate, pour the deck. By doing it late in the year, we avoid the conflicts with 169 being closed. Mm -hmm. We avoid the problem with the long year bat because we need to cut down some trees and the gravel quarries will be at a lower level of production so it doesn't have as much effect on the businesses down there. Mm. So it's kind of unusual <coughs> timing for a project, but those are the reasons. It also gives us time to determine if the state will have bonding funds available. They are poor condition, they need to be done, we need to mm. find a way to get them done. Will they be a little bit wider to well? I think you mentioned they might be a little, because they're pretty narrow, they're not very yeah. wide. Well, two of them are, are wide actually, and then one is narrow which will be wide. Oh, okay. Yep. All right, and then the County Road 111, 144, and another on 144, some old small bridges that would be replaced by big box covers, <coughs> depending on funding. All right. Were, any other um, questions for Al? Were uh, any of these um, involved or being built with the sales tax that uh, I know we won't be receiving that until what, April? Starting, we'll get the Starting, starting now. Yeah, yeah, that's when. <coughs> that's when but um, do we have any plans or any anything going right now in conjunction with that the half percent sales tax? We're uh, planning on it having a major effect in 2017. Okay. Our 16 program is pretty well set by the items I went through here and consume all of our available funds. Right. The, uh, the concept we discussed at the workshop where in 2017 we'd borrow ahead a little bit and that would allow us, uh, and repay it with this dedicated sales tax fund, that would allow us to proceed with 12 and with additional rural projects. Okay. So in 2017, we'd see a big bump because of the sales tax mm -hmm. with 12 being built and additional uh, rural projects being built and an additional uh, bituminous maintenance overlays. Okay. As well as providing matching funding for bridge bonding. On a uh, quick question, Al, just on the 66, um, Highway 66 from Good Thunder to Casa 9. So there won't be any actual breaking ground or construction or anything in this year, 2016, coming from Good Thunder to yep. 9. 
Mm -hmm. From in 2016, we will be rebuilding 66 from Good Thunder to 9. Oh, yep. okay, because I see mm -hmm. it says completing design and acquiring right away. I didn't know, are we we're actually going to do construction then? Yeah. Okay. I thought that was the plan. But yep. I we're the getting changed. lined up to do a small contract, <coughs> probably with quotes to remove trees prior to April, and then do a large contract to do the grading, recycling, new oh, pavement. Okay, so it's going to be a big project. It'll be shut down, won't it, or eventually? Or? Be closed except for local traffic. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> so we're really hustling. That's our big project to get ready to go next spring. Yeah. And then we still got to put the two minutes overlay going on. On the south, south part, south yes. Section. Yes. So we got a lot of work. I mean, it's going to be a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Yep, it'd be a very busy summer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. right. Okay. Right. Anything Thank else? you very much. <coughs> Thanks, Alan. Thank you. Thank you, Al. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thank Ryan. Ryan. Good day. It's a beautiful winter day out there. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's going nice to get colder. Training. It's going to get colder, too. <laughs> <laughs> All I want to know is where we're going for lunch today. I didn't see it on the agenda. Thought we'd be done too early, but. <laughs> Mr. Chair, do you want to going? keep going or do you want to take oh, a short break? We got time. Why don't we take a couple minutes break? break. We got time. No, All right, we'll call our meeting back to order. We'll go and do some administrative services. County board minutes. I'll move the minutes. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Questions, comments? Hearing and seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Bills. Uh, I'll move the bills. I'll second. second. Got a first and a second for the bills. Questions? Uh, there's a couple here. Let's see. I went through one with, there's a couple of them with Bob, which he was helpful with yesterday when we met. But I did have one more follow up one. And it probably relates to another one we asked, or I asked you, Bob. Because I saw <coughs> some of them where it was multiple like a list of things you know what i mean remember that where a credit card is used for making payments on things or purchases i saw and i'm sure this is probably the same thing but on the second week there's staples advantage and it's got like 331 then it's got 11,000 3,000 13,000 303 4,000 i mean it adds up to almost $33,000 worth of purchases but they're all Boom, 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 boom. You know, I just, I'm just kind of curious what that, what that it's all about. Is that it's office supplies? I'm sure and stuff, it, but it's equipment, uh, office equipment for a number of different departments. Some of it's with the uh, South Central Community-based initiative, the hub, over in the government center. So there was some remodeling work oh, okay. that was done there with office equipment, oh, and I then see. there's some uh, chairs in the IT department as well as uh, conference room. Um, material in the human service conference room okay so it's a mixture of you know equipment that was purchased uh, items that were budgeted typically at the end of the year when the budget still looks uh, like it can handle those types of items we purchase those okay and they don't sit on the credit card forever I mean they get paid off pretty quickly or well this particular one is a direct payment to Staples Oh, okay. So we were, were invoiced by Staples for those items. But they're all paid individually. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, they're one, two, three, four, five, so it'd be like six. Right, and yeah. it's based on the department that's put that item in our payment system. Okay, okay. Just, so it wasn't credit cards on that one? No, okay. it was not. Thank you. Any other questions on the bills? Uh, <coughs> Regents, let's see what is it? Regents of the University of Minnesota, the first week. Uh, contract that's of our service after extension or something? Yeah, that's our quarterly payment for okay. extension. I, okay. I got the other one I answered, got answered here, so I'm, that's all I have. All right. If there's no other questions or comments, I'll call for vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Human Mr. Resources. Mr. Chair and Commissioners, item number six in your packet is the Human Resources uh, Department agenda. Just a couple of informational items there. Uh, first one is that we've initiated recruitment to refill the park supervisor. And then um, we have completed uh, filling out a position for a custody officer. So refilled that position. I met him this morning. 
Well, you seem like a real nice guy. Really? Oh, Andrew? They, yep. They oh, he's over here at the courthouse? Yep. Mm -hmm. He met with me and Will. And oh, okay. Mm -hmm. seemed like a nice guy. Any Ooh, questions? Nervous. Comments? I was just curious who's going to be on the interviews and when they finally get the interviews for the park supervisor, who, who sits in on those, Bob? I would guess it would be the county engineer as well as the assistant county engineer, uh, Chad Wildy. Okay, so Chad and, and Al would be... That would be my guess. I haven't, and... I haven't asked them directly, but Chad directly supervises the park supervisor, so okay. I'm sure he'll be involved. And we don't have HR or anybody involved with that, then they don't sit in on them? Or uh, sometimes it kind of depends on the department whether they ask for HR representation as well. Sometimes we'll have Heidi sit in okay. uh, in a department interview. I know I, I, we've discussed it once, but I just want to throw it out there just so you guys know that there's been discussion, but from my part, from my side, is that I think we've got so many parks here that I almost thought we should have a separate department of parks. <laughs> and that it would be that, that the park supervisor would be a department head. And I mean, that's just something we could look at somewhere down the road if everybody felt it was necessary. But I'll tell you, we got a lot more uh, management things going on within that whole realm. They work well within public works, don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. But I just think that, um, that uh, I could see where they could be at their own little department head. You know, we've got even our veteran services down here, you know, we got two staff in that office and he's a department head. The park, parks uh, supervisor, there's a lot of responsibility that goes on with that job and um, overseeing about 15 of our properties that are parks and I could see where that could be a department head position. But just a that's, discussion that's, item. It's a good concept except that uh, really in the winter months um, I know. That's the thing. and works, works directly it, in, the, in the highway department yeah. and that's, yeah. so that's you know, our, our parks really are a seasonal thing. You're right. So, uh, you know, when it comes down to um, the winter months, you know, the you can't lay them off. Right. So he has to be a, a type of person that can work with the uh, rest of public works on different projects. So. Right. <clears throat> okay, any other questions, comments? We'll move on. <coughs> Mr. Chair, Commissioners, item number seven in your packet is uh, kind of an annual uh, memo about uh, crop damage payment schedule. Uh, we do uh, discuss this with the extension director to come up with our estimated yields and price per bushel. We'll remind the board that uh, these rates uh, can be adjusted uh, should we see some changes in the commodity prices or estimated yields, but uh, this is uh, crop damages that we would use in our public drainage system um, to reimburse landowners if we have to do some work there. Do we have much, um, just a question, um, well I can move it I guess. Okay, I got I'll a motion move it. to approve. Do, you second? Move it? do you move it for the whole thing? Yeah. Okay, I'll second it. Yeah. I was just curious how many uh, payments we ever make on uh, oats or wheat. I just. Um, you know, I haven't seen any Very specifically, <laughs> but uh, they might be out there. Um, be. Historically, you realize that Blewett County had started out with a lot of wheat and no corn or soybeans at no. all. No soybeans at all. But I think there is some rotation of crops that might mm -hmm. bring those into play at times, even There's though they're I, smaller I have seen crop. them driving yeah. around the country. You have seen yeah. them. Small fields. I've seen small you fields know, of oats. Yeah. But you're things. right. There's not a I'm lot. Not. I mean, it, yeah. uh, we are really a soybean and corn county but uh, you see some and like I said it used to be but yeah you know, years not, years ago. not like uh, the county I grew up in Wilkin County yeah, which has, uh, yeah, have, yeah. we really rotate the small grains in there but I think one of the Hollerick families out there by Good Thunder does small fields of uh, oats and they do have oats out there because yeah. they make they grind up flour oh yeah that's right they make flour mm -hmm. their own their own flour is that right yeah yeah. Right. I mean, it's not huge. I mean, so these are for crop damages if you had right. significant damage. That's right. Or I was thinking there wasn't. <clears throat> and I think, think some people grow it for feed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's good. It's good for uh, horses. Oats is, yeah. Oats definitely. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Just... All right. Any other questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. <clears throat> Motion carries. Publication bids. Yes, item number eight in your packet is the 2016 publisher bids. This is a requirement of state statute that we uh, publish bids to um, then 
publish things like our delinquent tax list, our board of commissioner and board of equalization summaries, any legal notices, as well as a financial <coughs> statement for the county. And so we've indicated here the bids that were received and the recommended uh, bids to be accepted by the board. So those items with an asterisk on the list are those that we're recommending be approved by the board. Can I, can I ask one question before? About, sure. Uh, the very last one is the insertion rate for the annual financial statement. Is it required by law that we, we put, we use both of them? I believe it is, yep, yes. Yep, the statute states that you have to put it in two papers. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's what right I Right mean. below it says, yep. Yeah, then, uh, then I would move the uh, bids. Second. Do we do them all at one time or do we do them separately in the past? I know we've done them separately. We've, we've done it both ways. Okay, so right. just, there's a motion to accept all the bids? The recommended bids? Yep. Okay, and do I have a second? Second? Yep. Discussion? Did Drew? Quick question of Bob, I was just wondering, Bob, so who, who do we have that does these? I mean, they must call and ask, what, what, what would you charge us if we do this? I mean, do they? We do a formal bid, so we do publish a legal bid notice oh. in the newspaper yeah, to yeah, get yeah. these bids. Oh, so really? Are we required to do that? I mean, are we required? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> because, I mean, the free press, we would want to go with regardless, I would think. Um, well, it certainly has the broadest distribution. That's what I mean. It covers our whole region right here, Make Your Free Press does. It? No, it doesn't cover the southern part. There's a lot of people that don't read the Free Press. And I mean, that's one of the papers. It, oh, it, it seems like it would the be the, the, the first choice for, for the majority of our population. You know what I mean? So I don't know. If it, but I'm just wondering. So they, they just have a rate, and they just go by that schedule, and then we... They respond. We put out a, a bid notice, a um, request with these items, and they... Uh, provide a response and okay so that's handled out of the administration office okay chair yeah yes. I know I know what you were going to ask too about earlier I mean Vance uh, if online versions count at all or if you know those kind of things that make it a little bit easier you know like let's just say we've got Joe Steck with the uh, Mankato Times or online versions I don't know if they count I think it has to be printed doesn't it I'm not sure if that's been acceptable yet to put it that, on. that's a little bit unclear you know this is a uh, an older statute that we're um, complying with, but uh, yeah, I don't know if we got a bid from uh, just an online newspaper, whether that would meet the requirements or not. Okay. Vance? You know, I've uh, every year I have come out and stated <laughs> my dissatisfaction <laughs> with, with these bids. Uh, and especially now this year, since every one of these statements we put on our website. Right. And in the past, mm -hmm. there was one that was missing that we didn't put on, but every one of these yeah. we put on. And I, and I would probably, well, I know that there are more Wi-Fi across Blue Earth County than people that read the Mankato Free Press. And there certainly is more Wi-Fi across the county than people that read the Maple River Messenger. In fact, I don't know how many people from the city of Mankato do that. It just would make sense, and it's a state law, so we have nothing we can do about this, but it would really make sense it's an, to change the law uh, statewide to give the counties that have the ability to put this online and put a notice out to in the papers that these this information is online and the the website to go to 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 reach it it would save thousands of dollars i believe in talking to bob i believe that we spend close to eight thousand dollars a year on this um i talked to ryan administrator in nicola county he said they spend up to forty thousand dollars oh you're kidding wow. that's what he told me because they have a lot of smaller <clears throat> rural papers i don't know but Plus more that, print over there I bet. but it's but well, well in, per, in doing yeah, so uh and and of course you know with a 94 million dollar budget eight thousand dollars isn't doesn't seem like a lot but we really for taxpayers and the ability for people to get the information it just doesn't make sense that we even do this yearly. We, we, we really should be able to by state, but it's something I believe uh, uh, AMC has been contacted. I think we're not gonna talk about it this year, but possibly next year we can bring this up saying 
this is one of those things that of an old antiquated law that needs to be changed yeah. because with the uh, websites and everything it's easier for somebody if they're interested to get it online than it is to look for a newspaper that has it I agree in saying so I'm still gonna vote for this just because I know by we state law we have to <laughs> but I'm just I'm just telling you that you know I I have an issue with this um, I'll I'll make sure I send my my annual emails to my <coughs> legislators and and uh, representatives but uh, it's uh, uh, I also know that the uh, um, newspapers have a very strong lobbying effort uh, and evidently they feel this is very important so okay any other questions or comments <sighs> hearing none all in favor say aye. aye aye all opposed same sign motion carries 2016 bounties well, mr. chair and commissioners I have number nine in your packet is a resolution uh, authorizing a bounty for uh, gophers uh, both striped gophers and pocket gophers we uh, brought forward a resolution with the same rates for 2016 that have been um, in place for prior years but uh, I understand there might be some interest in adjusting those rates and so I uh, bring it forward for your consideration today okay comments yep. questions want to move this to get it move rolling? to approve second second, second. okay good no, I just handed out an article from the uh, Dan Lenahan from the, the Free Press. Uh, I got it off Associated Press from 2009 just to show. And I think it's been a long time since we've adjusted the rates. Um, I don't know when they were last changed many years ago. You know, it's been like this. Um, I thought for simplicity it might be all right to friendly amendment to change it to just a buck a tail, regardless of what kind of a gopher it is. Um, what happens is that the, the money goes to the township. They, they have to give us a record of what they've done. And they sometimes chart, they'll, they'll sometimes pay two or three dollars mm. per gopher if they wanna get rid of them in their, their particular area, they have a problem with them or something. And, um, and, uh, and so this helps reimburse their expenses for paying their local residents that, that take on some of these uh, bounties. And um, I just thought it might be easier just to say, let's just call it a buck for it, regardless of what kind of a gopher comes in. But it's up to you guys if you want to entertain that idea to make it simpler. Uh, are you asking to amend it? For yeah, a just to a dollar. Okay. Instead of having the fifty cent one in there, just make it a dollar. Okay. Regardless what kind of gopher they they are trapping. Does somebody want to second Drew's amendment? Okay. I don't care either way, but it hasn't changed Bob, for many many years. Bob's kind of Bob's kind of getting nervous over that extra thirteen dollars <laughs> in our budget this year. Mike. <laughs> it, it was one hundred and twenty nine dollars that we paid out in two thousand fifteen. I wonder how so. many were striped and how many were. Do you uh, have that rock? breakdown, Bob? Yeah. I actually do not have that breakdown. <laughs> I'd be audit. disappointed if you did. Oh, come on, you guys. <laughs> Maybe do an audit before we double our budget. Oh, come on. oh, oh Drew, okay. I just thought it'd be Drew easier, and also it ups the ability for the townships just to recoup a little bit more money. If there's a fifty cent ones, it's a buck. On them now. Um, what happens is they might pay two dollars, okay, yes, and whatever they get reimbursed, it just helps offset their costs. So it's actually a benefit to it's a benefit to the township by raising it to a buck. Are you saying a bunch of them get try that's pay two bucks? Some of them do, yeah. In some blue, some counties that county? I took looked online pay three, but then they only get a buck from the county. See, so yeah. Right. Doesn't um, make much difference yeah. to me. Who's probably well, I'll, I'll second it. Got a second oh, for the amendment. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's holiday season. Oh, I I don't know if our budget can handle it. Oh come on, Vince. <laughs> All right, let's vote on the amendment. Okay. okay. To change it from fifty cents to a dollar on the is it the striped which one, one? Which one is it? The striped? I can't. I don't remember. I don't have that page. Striped up. was yeah. Was it's fifty. 50. How about, right. Yeah. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Now we can go back to the original motion of the bounties. <coughs> Any other discussion? I just one thing. We're not actually correct. It's not a striped gopher. It's a 13 line ground squirrel. Oh, oh what? Oh, you're probably <laughs> right. Ground squirrel? I know I'm right. <laughs> so did you want to make an amendment? I would, I would make a, an amendment that we change it from striped gopher to 13 line ground squirrel. No, I have so a question. That, though. So it's not that a follow the state law. What? I know that's the thing. The, the state statute. Of course, it. you you made the amendment. I'll second it. Sure. And then then the question is, does that follow state law? 
I don't know. I, I don't, don't know either. Does. But I, what we could do is say and or 13 line ground squirrel. You know what I mean? Because there, there might be two varieties of striped gophers in this in this region. I'm not sure. I haven't I done that analysis. I knowledge of this Gophers, I've, excuse me, I'm sorry, Commissioner and Chair. Yeah. Um, the statute reads gophers or ground squirrels. Oh. oh. Well, then you, as well, a friendly that, amendment to that, you should put then, gophers then or well, or that's, that's ground then, ground then, All right, then Will is absolutely correct right. in it his amendment. It has to be 13 lined ground squirrels. Yes. So we okay. put, put in, the, let, I'll second, or you already seconded I already seconded yeah, it. You already so seconded it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and right. According to the statute, it has to be the feet and not the tail. There are some counties that have applied for a variance, and they, they are allowing just the tails for counting. But it doesn't say anything about tails or feet here. No, I know, but in the statute, it talks about feet. It doesn't matter to us, um, Commissioner, so. because the township. They, 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 they oversee it. They are the ones that okay. oversee it. We okay. reimburse the township. Okay, so that sounds good. So we don't um, okay, I understand. oversee what they yeah. require for proof. Okay. You'll, re you'll remain the gopher tail and feet counter, Jesse? Um, I process the reimbursement. <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we got an amendment on the okay. table again. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. <laughs> Motion carries. I'm calling the question on the last one. <laughs> so the original <laughs> amendment, all in favor say aye. Aye, aye. aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. You run a tight ship. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> proud of you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> starting the new year, right? Yeah. 2016 loan interest. Mr. Chair and Commissioners, item number 10 is a, a memo regarding the small cities revolving loan and ditch uh, balance loan interest rates. We have a uh, policy that's been in place that says the county board reviews the interest rate each year. The interest rate shall be a half percent less than the prime rate on the date of this meeting and shall not exceed 8% or be less than 4%. Given where the prime rate is currently at, we're still <clears throat> recommending the rate remain at 4% in 2016. Move approval. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item number 11 in your packet is a letter from the state auditor outlining uh, audit engagement. It does um, outline the responsibilities of the county as well as the state auditor in performing our audit for our 2015 uh, financial report. And so we're recommending approval of this engagement letter. So moved. Second. Uh, second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item number 12 is a couple of uh, tobacco license renewals. Uh, these were renewals that uh, we expected in December, but uh, they arrived after our last board meeting. And so bringing it here for the board's consideration today to uh, approve these uh, tobacco licenses for the city of Mapleton as well as Dietz Foods in Mapleton. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Questions, comments? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item number 13 in your packet is a violent crime enforcement grant extension. This is the grant that provides some funding support to our Minnesota River Valley Drug Task Force. This is basically extending the grant into 2016 at the same amount that was received for 2015. So we're recommending approval of this grant agreement. Do a motion? Move approval. Second. Any discussion? I got a question. Very nice. Go ahead, Drew. Yeah. Um, this is just an extension. I know on the current grant status that we have for this, and it goes to our drug task force. Um, I did go online just to kind of look over some of the details, and there's a there's a violent crime, uh, I don't know if it's called a committee or t task force that you know, help initiate some of this in the state of Minnesota. And um, I know most of it. It sounded to me after reading through all the all the information related a lot to gang activity. You know what I mean? That, and, and selling drugs was part of the gang activity that goes on. I mean that they 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 obtain funds through selling drugs. And I just don't know how much 
really in our region here, I, I, I'd like to have more education someday or the board be educated. I, I, I miss not on how much uh, gang activity goes on in our region right here. Hmm. And, um, and I'm not saying it's a total inappropriate use of the grant, but most of the grantees I think were larger uh, uh, counties, uh, metro counties and that sort of thing. And um, I, I know we have some problems here, but I just didn't know, you know, um, just to get some more feedback on how it was utilized. And, sure. Well, I would, and, you know, like, I, don't I, think I, I would uh, ask you to contact, uh, you know, the, the folks on our sheriff's department that are in the, in the uh, uh, task force. Yeah. I think they could give you some really good information on, on what kind of problems we do have here in Blue Earth County. There is, we definitely have gang issues. Okay. in the city of Mankato in Blue Earth County. That's, uh, it's been going on for 30 some years, you know, back when Will and I were working. Yeah. And uh, it's no less now than it was back then. And, uh, but, but it's, it's always good to get some good information and education. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm sure everybody on, on the Sheriff's Department, anybody, uh, you talk to Mike or Brad, or anybody on there, they would be more than willing to, you know, fill you in and let you know what what's going on here in, in the county and the surrounding area. It'd be good. It'd be good. It'd be good. It'd be good for me to to. Some in days. fact, I do stop in there and find out about yeah. stuff. But it, that's always a good educational part. Well, it impacts what uh, Pat talks about out here. I mean, you know, he's talking about the mm -hmm. the data and um, and I, believe it or not, across the country. Uh, Drug arrests are still very high, extremely high. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the number one reasons why our prisons are being overcrowded. And there's a trend, <coughs> there's a trend towards trying to weed through who's really the more hardcore individuals from those who are just, you know, caught up in a system that's kind of unhealthy and not, not necessarily making them into criminals, but trying to help them with their lives instead of, um, and so I, I just think there's a gray area there where I think it, it does, like I agree with you that we need some education on this and 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 we can be progressive in our own county to, to help people who actually need help versus uh, criminalizing them and and seeing all these prosecutions that are going on within our county well the drug court is that's a yeah. good job of that. and that they've helped that's why they've we helped. have the yeah. drug court yeah. yep yep any comment uh, yeah Pat you got anything to add Pat, well we have, a, we have a drug task force board meeting later this uh, this week and I can talk to Lieutenant Worsell I know that there's been various times that there's been presentations given on the, the related to gang activity and whatnot so if you okay. want some additional information on that I can help facilitate that yeah be good. <clears throat> thanks Pat mm -hmm. education is always a good idea yep. all right any other comments or questions on the grant no. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Large assembly permit. Well, Mr. Chair. Second. <laughs> Second. <laughs> That's pretty great discussion. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> well, just a permit. permit for the oh, you permit. mean Go there. ahead, Bob. I want to do my job, though. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're talking about the, the, the demolition derby? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. All right, we got a motion and a second. Any <laughs> questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, unless there's something else to bring in front of this board, I have everything checked off my agenda. Yep. Let's see. We've got. Uh, I guess I would like to. Uh, I'd, I'd like to thank everyone for the year that you gave me. I, uh, I feel pretty blessed to have the board I have, uh, or I had this past year. Um, and the employees that we have or staff that we have for Blue Earth County, I, I consistently, the staff and the employees of Blue Earth County make our job easier because they do such a good job and uh, uh, take away a lot of the headaches from us. But uh, thank you very much for uh, all of the support that all of you gave me this la last year. And uh, I, I hope I can support Kip as much as he supported me this last year. Thank you. Thanks, Vance. Hey, thanks a lot, Vance. Oh, yeah. And what, the last page there says parliamentary procedure. I just had one question or, and or comment about that. Um, sometimes I sense, with, and it's, me too, we get confused a little bit on one, one issue, and that is when we've got staff before us here presenting, 
it's okay for us to ask the staff directly any question before anything's moved or anything. It's okay to explore it and talk to them and do whatever we want as long as we're not talking amongst each other. If we want to talk amongst each other, from what I understand, and you can correct me, Bob, or, or Jesse, or Pat, um, is that then we have to move the piece in order to have a discussion. But I think, amongst ourselves. Yeah, but it's okay, like if Vance had a question of Al or I did, we can ask him questions without moving it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. we can, it's okay to explore, ask questions, get information, whatever we want. and maybe Kind of like it. I did with publication bids. Yeah. Because yeah. I asked Bob a question about that one bid before we even made a mo motion. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes I feel like we have confusion in that area, I think. It's just yeah, if it's a public, like when it's a public hearing or you know, portion, yeah, then, then you'd have to, but. I, I know what you're saying. I mean, yeah, I we do the same thing to Phil, too. I mean, we ask questions yeah. as he goes Yeah, through. we can ask him a question about a program without having to move Just it. keep going. <clears throat> yeah. But yep. if we want to talk to each other, I guess we're supposed to move something. Right. That's well, what that's it's on the table. It's, it, we're, right. we're actually, it's an open um, motion. You know, that's that's what I understand. Is there anything, I just want, thought it would be good to discuss it. Yeah, I think uh, the chair actually has a responsibility of kind of acknowledging the motion, and that opens it up for discussion. So the safest route is always to get a motion on the table, then any discussion is fine. Um, if it's a clarification from a staff person that might influence whether you make a motion or right. not, I can certainly understand where that would have value to you as board members. And that's so, where so. I came from on right. the publication portion. Yeah. But if it's going to lead to discussion, I think the motion on the table helps with that. Okay. Well, and, and as chair this year, I guess it would be helpful to me, though, that if we do start those one-on-one -on -one questions, that it doesn't turn into a discussion, because a discussion, then that's, I will make sure we stop yeah. that. But if it's just a direct question to the staff, yeah. Well, we could allow that, and then, but as soon as it starts getting now, and he's asking a question, and he's asking a question, yeah, that's we're either going to have to yeah. stop it or get a motion. You mean of each other? Or, uh, each other, or if you all, well, usually four of us are asking the staff, it's, it's, and it starts to turn into a discussion. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that's, that's a clarification yeah. or a question, a quick question from one, you know, maybe two of us, but if all of a sudden we're all asking right. questions, yeah, we're having the something. full discussion, okay. then we at need the end it. of the day, we we're going to kill it. And especially if we know we're going to move it anyway. If well, it's a topic that's maybe sensitive, we're not sure we're even going to get a motion on it. Right. Well, that would make even more though sense. it's on the packet, it doesn't mean we have to. We don't have to make a motion on any of these. So if we're going to do that, I mean that's fine, but we need to make them direct. Yeah. Clarification. I can see making a motion questions. if we know we're going to do it anyway. Well, but yeah, if you know you're going to do it, but if yeah. you want to ask a question or two, but as soon as I see it start going, that now no, no, Mark's asking a question, then Will's asking yeah. a question, that yeah. we're going to cut that off and get a motion on the table. That's why it usually ends up that you get the motion right off but i i know what, I mean, what i mean that's some i know what you're saying yeah you're saying that's how why it ends up it's always good it's to no give this deal. out in the open in the first meeting of the year though mm -hmm. yeah and especially try, try to have an understanding of the, the personality of the chair you got to give the chair you got to make sure you, you, know, you don't want to get in trouble uh, give the chair some bring shock noise. collars for everybody <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Drew, on that. I know, I know I where you can get a taser. <laughs> I, have, I have two. <laughs> All right, uh, look for a motion to adjourn then. So Close. moved. Seconds. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries.